It's the start of the week. Hello and welcome to Business Daily Live from Seoul. I'm Shin Se-min in for E.G. Yoon. Here are the day's highlights. Feeling the pinch, Korea's leading firms cut back on employee numbers last year with the biggest losses seen in the shipbuilding industry. Ahead of the Lunar New Year holiday, the government gears up to stabilize grocery prices, including eggs, with the help of imports from the U.S. and Spain. Korea's slowing economy is being reflected on the jobs front. The number of people working for the country's top 100 companies in sales has fallen over the past year. According to data by the Financial Supervisory Service and Chebal.com, the number of people employed by the firms was 861,000 as of September, down more than 7,000 or 0.8 percent on year. The biggest losses came from the shipbuilding industry at the heart of the government's ongoing local restructuring drive with three of the largest shipbuilders seeing over 6,800 employees lose their jobs. The number of workers at seven Samsung companies declined by 12,000 as of September compared to the year before. According to Statistics Korea, the overall unemployment rate last year was 3.7 percent, the highest since 2010. Outbound shipments of Korea's industrial parts and materials posted a two-year decline on the back of weakening global demand. Korea's trade ministry says that the country's shipments of parts and materials, which make up for nearly half of the country's overall exports, dropped 4.8 percent on year last year, settling at 252 billion U.S. dollars. Of that, exports to China slowed the most, falling 11.5 percent on year to some 82 billion dollars while those to the U.S. slid 0.7 percent. But outbound shipments to ASEAN nations and Japan rose nearly 9 percent and over 3 percent, respectively. The combined shipments of China's big three smart film makers, Huawei, Oppo and Vivo, have surpassed Apple and are now second only to Samsung Electronics. According to market tracker Strategy Analytics, the combined shipments of the three Chinese smart film makers surpassed 255 million units in the first 11 months of last year, higher than Apple's 180 million and just behind Samsung's 280 million. It's the first time the Chinese smart filmmakers have together surpassed Apple. It comes just a year after China's leading producer Huawei surpassed 100 million shipments in 2015. The report says the trend is likely to continue this year as global users recognize the quality and affordability of Chinese smartphones. The Korean equity market failed to continue its positive momentum on the first session of the week. We're now joined by our markets contributor, Choi jin Suk to talk about the overall stocks market performance and upcoming events. Hello, jin Suk. Thanks for having me, Sammy. Sure. Uh, how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of this week? Foreign investors who put a lot of money into the Korean equity market last week dragged down both the Kospi and the Kostak today. The Kospi fell by 0.61% to close at 2064.17, while the Kostak followed with a 1% a downtick to close at 627.88. Despite stock buying by both retail investors and institutions, foreign investors sold massive amounts of shares on the Kospi market. By sector technology that has been leading the way in a recent rally performed relatively weak, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix, the largest and the second largest stocks by market cap, suffered from a correction spooking overall sentiment as well. After news that prosecutors requested an arrest warrant for Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong, the company share price extended losses even further. The so-called profit-taking is shown throughout today's session reflected mm -hmm. a certain level of uncertainty still lingering in global financial markets. What are some of the events that we have to look for as 
potential impacts will impact the market overall. Mm -hmm. uh, most of all, investors are still waiting to hear more from U.S. Uh, President-elect President -elect Donald Trump when it comes to future economic policies. Trump's inauguration is scheduled on January 20, so uncertainty seems inevitable leading up to the event. Global stock markets have been enjoying a rally due to expectations for loser fiscal policies from Trump. But we don't know yet how he will meet such high expectations going forward. Goldman Sachs, for example, said optimism over expected tax reforms from the Trump administration is likely to push the S&P 500 index to 2400 by the end of the first quarter. Despite this, the bank said investors are too optimistic when it comes to how low Trump can actually cut taxes and that this will add downward pressure on the rally from the second quarter. We'll see how he will deliver on January 20 and going forward from that. Economic indicators coming from the world's lead, two leading economies mm -hmm. will also impact the global financial market. And what are some of the expectations that are, we're looking at? Industrial production and the consumer price index from the U.S. will be unveiled on Wednesday. The same data from China and its Q4 GDP growth will be reported this Friday as well. Expectations are not that bad. U.S. industrial production is expected to see a rebound from the previous month's contraction. The Federal Reserve will also unveil its base book, which will provide hints on the economic conditions of various regions in the country. When it comes to China, experts forecast the Chinese economy grew by 6.7% last quarter, which would put the country within its target range of 65 to 7.0% growth for the year 2016. The consumer prices and the results from the Beige Book will weigh in on U.S. monetary policy as mm -hmm. well. And we have a lot of speeches coming from the Fed's officials today, this week, right? Right. Uh, first of all, Fed Chair Janet Yellow will deliver a couple of speeches on Wednesday and Thursday local time. Global investors are definitely uh, eager to get hints from her when it comes to future policy moves by the Fed. Fed officials, including heavyweights such as William Dudley and John Williams, We'll talk about economic conditions and their perspective on future policies as well. And while we're on monetary policy, over in Europe, the European Central Bank, or the ECB, will hold its policy meeting on Thursday. And most experts expect there will be no policy moves at this month's meeting. And not to mention the U.S. earnings season will be in full swing this week. Mm -hmm. um, how are things looking so far? Major U.S. banks, including J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo, reported robust earnings last week. For this week, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup and Morgan Stanley will follow with their Q4 earnings. IBM and General Electric will unveil earnings too. Market research firm FactSet says for Q4 2016, the blended earnings growth rate for the S&P 500 is 3.2%. If the index reports earnings growth for Q4, it will mark the first time the index has seen year-over-year -year growth for two consecutive quarters since Q4 2014 and Q1 2015. By sector, utilities, financials, Technology and consumer staples are expected to lead the way in the sharp earnings rebound. That was our uh, markets contributor, Choi Jin Seok. Thank you. Again. Thank you. With the Lunar New Year holidays, Seoul, now less than two weeks away, the government has agreed to expand its subsidies on the air transport of imported eggs. This is to stem the rise in prices following the nation's worst bird, out, uh, bird flu outbreak. First Vice Minister of Strategy and Finance Choi Sang-mok on Monday said efforts would be made to stabilize egg prices by raising its subsidy from the current 1 million won per ton to 1.5 million won or about 1,300 US dollars. He also said vegetable prices would be stabilized by releasing stockpiles into the wholesale market to double the supply. He said his ministry will also work with consumer groups to ensure prices of processed goods are not capitalizing on the price hike trend. 
As imported eggs from the U.S. begin to hit store shelves here in Korea, shoppers will notice the change in color of the eggs. Yunus Kim explains the difference between brown eggs and those that are white. Imported emergency eggs from the U.S. have arrived. To Koreans, the color could come across as peculiar as most eggs in this country are brown. So then, what's behind the difference? The difference is linked to the hens that lay the eggs. Leghorn hens that are typically white in feather lay white eggs, while New Hampshire hens that are brown in feather lay brown eggs. In fact, up until the 1970s, the leghorn hens were much more prevalent in Korea, making up a vast majority. Then, the breeding of New Hampshire hens took off. Because they laid eggs in higher frequency and their breeding cost was more affordable, more farmers chose to raise the brown egg-laying hens. What was just 14 percent of the overall hen population climbed to overtake the leghorn hens by the mid-80s and soared to 98 percent by the year 1991. Then is either more superior in terms of nutrients? The nutritional content of eggs can be affected by the feed the hen consumes or the breeding period, but there is no difference in terms of the color of the shell. Experts say instead of judging an egg by its shell, pick out fresh eggs by identifying those that are smooth on the surface with no spots. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. And with the Lunar New Year holiday fast approaching, people here are starting to look for the best places to buy groceries in demand for the big family gathering. For affordability, traditional markets are the answer. Seoul Agrofisheries and Food Corporation says while it would cost just over $180 to shop at large supermarkets, consumers will be able to save about 20 percent more if they buy at traditional markets, instead spending about $145 in total. This is based on a comparison of 36 products at about 50 traditional markets and 10 large supermarkets in the capital. Along with shopping for food, people here are also looking for gifts to express their gratitude during the holiday. But this year around, presents for, of imported goods seem to be in much greater demand. Our Lee Ji Young tells us why. The anti-graft Kim Young-nan Act, which went into effect in September last year, is about to change the landscape of the nation's Lunar New Year's Hall holiday when it comes to exchanging gifts. Instead of selling presents made up of local goods, retailers have been replacing them with cheaper imports to meet the price cap of about $42. For example, at one of Korea's largest department stores, Shinsege, imported beef from Australia that costs about $41 this year has fast been replacing Korea's local beef, Hanu, which cost as much as $228 during the Seoul holiday last year. On top of beef, Shinsege has also significantly increased the total volume of imported goods by 57 percent, including cutlass fish from New Zealand and apple mangoes from Peru, while Lotte department store has also expanded the number of gift sets made up of imported products by 40 percent. As a result, while gift sets made up of imported products are set to rise by up to 200 percent this year from about 67 percent last year, growth in local goods are expected to dip compared to last year. Market watchers say on top of the anti-graph law, the expansion of one-person households and weak domestic consumption are expected to increase the proportion of low-price gift sets. Lee Ju Young, Business Daily. And that does it for us today. Thank you for watching. And I will be back with more of today's top business news tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.